Okay, this is Dr. Jim Ducanto. I'm lecturing about the oscillator. I'm going to show you two models of oscillators. I'm going to show you a model called the HD and a model called the EMX. The HD has a pressure release range from 15 to 30. And the EMX, which is a pre-hospital paramedic model, ranges from 20 to 45 centimeters of water. These devices flow 30 liters a minute on the maximal inhalation phase during the automatic cycling mode when the gold buttons are depressed and locked down. The units are used typically either with an internal filter that fits with uh, underneath the nozzle right here or they are used with a HEPA filter. This is a HEPA filter that has a tie-in for a side stream capnography uh, hose. The devices can be used with masks, supraglottic airways, tracheal tubes, and I've actually even used them with uh, um, ventilating rigid bronchoscopes. So what we're going to do here is we're going to give a demonstration on a mannequin of face mask ventilation, supraglottic airway ventilation, and um, tracheal tube ventilation. Now the oscillator is a device that really only wants two things in life. It's a very simple device. It only wants two things in life. It wants a supply of gas, either oxygen or air, between 40 and 90 PSI, whatever that translates into for you European guys, into bars, I forgot. I can look it up later. And it wants an open airway. You have to give it both or it won't work. I'm gonna start out by demonstrating the oxalator on a anesthesia test lung. This device has two knobs and one huge turning dial. The first knob, marked INH, stands for inhalator. This is a term for passive oxygen administration. You can hear the device hissing. It's delivering 15 liters a minute passively into the bag. If the bag doesn't take a breath, it doesn't get any oxygen. Should I need to supplement the bag, test lung, with pressurized oxygen, I can briefly depress and release the O2 release button. I've set the pressure release on the oxalator to 15 centimeters of water. If I continue to hold that O2 release button, the eye phase will stop upon achieving 15 centimeters of water. I want you to see what happens to the bag as I go up in pressure. I've gone to 20 centimeters of water, I'm going to 25, the bag gets bigger and bigger obviously with higher pressures. That's 30 centimeters of water. What I'm going to do now is put something called the automatic mode on where I lock the O2 button down and as you can see the oxalator is ventilating this test lung autonomously. I'm going to go to 20 psi. Because the inspiratory flow rate is 30 liters per minute the rate of gas flow per second is 500 cc's. I can set a tidal volume by knowing the amount of time that the eye phase takes up. One second, 500 cc's. Two seconds, 1,000 cc's. So I'm going to just listen to the oscillator working. This is about, it's almost one second, but not quite. That's more like it. That's one second. That's 500 cc's of gas right there. This is a flow triggered device, so if there's any interruption in flow, the oscillator will stop. I'm going to twist this bag on itself to obstruct the flow. Hold on, let me do it like this. Okay, this is the oscillator telling me I have an obstructed airway. If it's with a mask, it means I either have an upper obstructed airway or a lower obstructed airway. Upper meaning base tongue, base of tongue. Lower meaning the larynx is in laryngospasm. 
as I begin to release my airway obstruction, you're going to hear different noises from this device. It's going to start to flow here in a moment. It's flowing just a little bit, just a little bit, just a, there it is. But look at it, it's hesitating. It's still filling the bag, still filling the bag, but it's really, really slow. The oscillator will not blast around airway obstructions. If you have an airway obstruction, it won't blast through it. It's not like squeezing the bag to get around an obstruction, it won't work. This thing will not do it. The benefit of this is that it's not going to put gas in the stomach the way a bag valve device would do it. Okay, so let's actually do a quick demonstration of CPR on this bag and then we'll go to face mask, masking the mannequin. Okay. You're going to notice that the valve on this device is fast enough to literally trigger in between chest compressions. You'll see this on the mannequin as well. Let's start out by um, ventilating our mannequin with a mask. Okay, let's start out by ventilating our mannequin with a mask. I'm going to turn on the inhalator mode and I'm going to apply my mask over the nose and mouth using some mask straps. We use these in anesthesia and if there's anything that anyone in pre-hospital medicine or emergency medicine can learn from us is that these are inexpensive and very useful and perhaps you should learn how to use them. I'm going to set my pressure release initially to 15 centimeters of water and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the automatic mode. Now the lungs in this mannequin are made out of plastic bags. They're not very physiologically um, uh, similar to human lungs. But we're going to work with what we got, okay? So if you can kind of see the mannequin's chest go up and down, I'm going to ventilate this. Uh, this is a CPR lean. A ventilator. I'm going to go up to 25 centimeters of water. It's going to be a more impressive chest rise, more impressive cycling. I can transition from mask ventilation to supraglottic airway ventilation in a heartbeat. This is an AirQ 3.5. Now that I've placed my air cue, I'm going to remove the mask from the HEPA filter and connect it to the oscillator. I'm going to set the pressure release to 15 and we'll see if we can ventilate. I've ventilated this mannequin before with the oscillator, but truly it's difficult to find a mannequin that will seal with an LMA to, to be able to um, ventilate with an oscillator because the oscillator's flow rate being 30 liters a minute is so slow compared to many um, uh, bag valve mask ventilation rates, which are more like 60 to 100, that it's hard to get these things to really to move the chest. So I'm going to put a little bit more air into our air cue and see if I can seal it up a little bit. The answer is no. So I'm not going to be able to simulate ventilation on this mannequin right now. Of course, if I pinch the nose, I might be able to. Let me see. No, it's not going to work. Okay. So just assume this works. It does work. You can see my clinical videos. I'm going to go from this to tracheal intubation, and we're going to ventilate with a tracheal tube now. Here, there we go. This is an 8.0. You noticed that the oscillator was cycling uh, pretty quick with um, the face mask down at 15 centimeters of water. I'm going to have to take this up around 25 to make it work through an 8.0 tracheal tube. The oscillator in general will, will require more pressure to ventilate a patient through a tracheal tube than through a face mask because you're working through a small lumen in order to move that gas back and forth. The I phase is active, the E phase is passive. If you looked at a pressure time waveform of this device, it would be a sawtooth shaped waveform, not a square waveform uh, that our normal ICU ventilators use where over time the pressure goes up, gets held, and drops off. This flows up and down, up and down. It looks like a sawtooth or a shark tooth. 
So that's my basic explanation. Thanks.